Because we left for seven days and we returned. Book club time. Chapter six. Here we go. Chapter six. We've been we've been waiting for this one. <laughs> That's it. Well, we've been waiting for you, Mr. Shooty. Oh, oh okay. I see what you're doing there, shooters. Um, <laughs> quick, quick questions. Uh, good. We got a new face with us today, but I'm excited to have uh, the Reverend Scott Shooty with us today for discussion time. Um, Scott does a lot of things that here at Sandals Church in the staff role, and I'm going to let him uh, talk more about what those things are. Um, but first, we're going to do a quick rundown of uh, Scott Shooty's nicknames. We got Please, three. Yes. We got two that are pretty canon for him. We got one we're going to test out today. Uh, so again, Scott Shooty, you can see his last name right there. Because I'm, I'm the only one that put the last name like a fool. Yeah. Uh, we got, we got <laughs> coming in at number one. Number one nickname for Scott is a, a Shooters, just a classic straight across the plate Shooters. All right. Shooters. Yeah. Uh, debatable on the spelling. We've spelled it the the way that his last name is spelled. We've also done it the S H O O T E R. Anyway, point being, Shooters is one. Uh, number two, Shooter McGavin, uh, character mm. from Happy Gilmore, I think. Is Personal right? favorite of mine, for sure. <laughs> That's my favorite, too. Shooter McGavin. Um, and then we're test driving one today. Uh, here it is, number three, big drum roll, uh, Shoots and Ladders. Shoots, shoots and Ladders. Shoots and Ladders. That's right. It's because, um, you know, life's just a game to me, and I'm always climbing <laughs> to the top. <laughs> Totally practiced that. Anyways, um, those are our, our, our three nicknames for Scott Shooty, but um, obviously super excited to, to dive into this chapter. Scott, glad you're here to talk Happy with to us. Happy to be here. Um, Pastor Fredo, as always, um, mm -hmm. spending time with you and hanging out in the online campus is so grateful to have you as our pastor. And so, um, yeah, I want to just do a quick intro. Scott, throw to you just to share like a little bit about what you do here at Sandals Church and kind of your your story and how you got here to begin with. Yeah. So uh, I'm our planning and development manager. And uh, what that means is I just help us stay ahead. So I'm always thinking six months, eight months, a year out. Uh, and my job is to just help us um, plan and get all the right teams talking about the right stuff in order to accomplish things at the right time. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. You... yeah. That's, that's, that's my job now. I've had quite a few jobs here at Sandals uh, in my seven years now. Yeah. T take us back to the, the first one that you had, the first role you had, and then maybe a little uh, context for those who don't know about the Marino Valley campus and some history yeah. they have with that, that location. Yeah. So I'll jump back even a little bit before Sandals. Uh, I came on staff at a church in Marino Valley in 2013. Um, I was like an intern there and I did a bunch of admin stuff for them and they really liked everything I was doing and I eventually became their like admin pastor um, and then through trial and fire slowly but surely everyone on that staff left but myself um, and so it was a few years of difficulty and waiting um, you know we went like a year and a half without a senior pastor and then we finally wow. hired someone and they were only around for a year then they left again um and then the board asked me to step in as the interim lead pastor at that church and then within two months i had started conversations with sandals and uh we had come to an agreement to become a, a sandals location and then uh, i stayed on staff at the marino valley campus at sandals for three years and i was the uh, admin guy at that campus and then uh the week that the world shut down for COVID, I changed jobs to a network position here at uh, the Hunter Park campus, um, where I just kind of started doing special projects. And eventually and surely, I eventually got to this place. I've had lots of weird little projects throughout the years. But um, yeah, that's kind of my story. That's awesome. I love it. I love Scott, it. I, I'm going to give you an affirmation on the, I don't, you know, this is your one for today from me. <laughs> <laughs> No, but for real, man, I you you are truly one of my favorite people to work with here and collaborate oh, thank with you. on projects. I mean that, man. And so, yeah, super thankful to to chat with you guys about uh, chapter six today. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk to a little bit of the waiting that you did in that time of the the you know merger and all that sort of stuff. I'd love to hear you reflect a little bit more on that. Um, for everyone else who's joined with us today, though, if you're in a time like literally right now in your life where you are uh, in, a, in a period of waiting, like you're you're uh, waiting for the miracle, you're waiting for the, the the news, the diagnosis, the response, whatever it may be, 
Um, we just love to hear from you. So drop it in the chat as we're chatting today. We'd love to yeah. engage with you all and what what seasons of life you might find yourselves waiting in right now. Um, waiting is really hard. I think Pastor Matt did a great job of just describing various different ways to look at and interpret times of waiting. Um, and so we'll dive into a little bit of that today as well. But we'd love to hear from you. Like, what do you, if you're waiting right now, we'd love to hear what that thing you're waiting on is, what the circumstances are. I'll be able to pray for you as we wrap later on today. So um, going back to you, Scott, what, to share a little bit more about the, that time of waiting as you were, you know, in the environment and leading the church and now looking into this unknown what's next for us as a community. Are we going to close? Like what? Talk, talk a little bit about all of that. Yeah, I'll um, kind of hone in on maybe like one year of that time. Uh, 2015 was a really rough year for me. Um, mm -hmm. It was the year without the senior pastor. So the senior pastor had retired uh, in 2014. And then in 2015, um, you know, it was a whole year long without having uh, a person in that role. I was also a full time in seminary at the time. And so I was doing full time <laughs> classes while also wo working full time at the church. Um, but that ended up being a little bit of a blessing because I started asking my teachers to come to my church and preach. I was like, I'll give you a little stipend, you know, like come and preach at my church. Like, I, just so I don't have to do it. Like you're telling me to write a paper right now. Like I'll do it if you come and preach at my church. That's a smart um, man right there. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a really difficult time. And then I also had some personal stuff happen that year. I had a, a girl that I was talking to that it didn't work out and that really hit me hard. And then both of my grandmas passed away that year. Um, and so it just felt like mm. one thing after the other, um, where I was just waiting to like, feel like I had some kind of like blessing from God. It felt like just everything around me was, was falling apart. Um, and it really, uh, was a hand of God difficult time in my life where I had to come to the realization that, um, God's plan for my life wasn't going to be my plan for my life. And God's plan for my life is what I needed to submit to. And so those were like the two big things I pulled out of that. And I would say like, even as I got towards the end of that, I was still struggling with it, but um, I felt like I was growing and learning. And so I even had some prayers where I said, God, if there's more difficulty that is going to help me grow even more, like just bring it now. Like I'm already in the difficulty, like let's just tack it all on now. So I don't have to do more difficulty down the road. But um, yeah, it's, it was a super uh, growing uh, moment for me. Mm. Man, man. I can imagine uh, there would probably be a ton of moments as you just described that last year where you were probably ready to quit or, or walk oh, out. Oh, for sure. Was there anything that you felt kind of um, kept you grounded a little bit in that season? Yeah, honestly, uh, there was like little pieces here and there that, that kept me. Uh, and honestly, it was like a, an, I, I just felt so obligated to the people there. Um, like if I would have left, that church would have shut down. Um, mm, and so while I was, I was like suffering internally and personally, um, I just had this other weight weighing on me of like, I can't, I can't leave. Um, I felt a little bit like, uh, I think it's Jeremiah in the old Testament who like basically like says, God, like, why are you using me? Like I, I had, uh, a lot of felt, uh, things like that. I actually even went to counseling of like feeling used by the church, um, and had to work through some things with that. Um. So it was difficult, but it was like yeah. my love and obligation for the people that kept me around. But there was also little things, uh, cool stories, like a miracle that I think did happen during that waiting for something bigger um, was we had a week where we had, I think it was like $12,000 in expense coming up. We had like our mortgage and our rent. We had two different um, addresses and um, we had no money in the bank. We had like 50 cents in the bank. Uh, right. And we only typically would bring in I don't know, like four or five grand a week at that time. Wow. And so I was like, oh, wow, for the first time in my whole time here, like we're going to have to like not pay a mortgage or not pay a rent. Or I, I'm also at this time 24 years old. I've never done this kind of <laughs> stuff before. Like I'm just trying to figure this stuff out. Um, and so I went to our elder board. I kind of like laid out the situation and I was like, hey, like I think we need to pray and we need to fast and like seek the Lord in this because I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, looking at it. And that next week, um, we got a letter in the mail from a lady who used to go to church there like 10 years before, who in her letter said like, Hey, I used to go to church there. I moved away like 10 years ago, but have never found another church that I called home. 
and I've been saving my tithe checks for 10 years and here they are. Whoa. Like that just like popped into the mail. That wow. Week. And it was wow. everything we needed, like plus like 10 bucks. And like we, we covered everything <laughs> and then had 10 bucks in our account that next week. Amazing. Uh, and it was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, God is still in this. Like God is doing something here. He's bringing us somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I have to wait and be faithful in the waiting as we continue moving forward. And, you know, oh eventually I, I see like, oh, like God's bringing sandals to Marino Valley. Uh, yeah. And finally, get to see like what he was orchestrating. Yeah. That's, wow. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Scott. That's awesome. Uh, Jeannie, thank you for sharing about Matt's uh, surgery. Um, I know lots of us are praying. Um, mm -hmm. If maybe we could even just pause now, Pastor Fredo, you good if we just pray over Jeannie and 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 Matt and Matt's surgery and. It sounds like even the his work ability to work is impacted for some months. So that's yeah, a second cool. operation too. I think she said so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's pray for yeah. Go if you wouldn't mind, Pastor Fredo. Sure. Yeah, Father, we uh, commit Matt to you, and we ask that this second operation would be successful. Uh, that the surgeons would be able to um, correctly just uh, fix the bicep, the arm, and that his body would respond well to what they do to it and that um, the recovery time would be um, what it needs to be and, and nothing more so that he would be able to return to work. We also do pray, God, that Matt and Jeannie in this moment would um, continue to rely on you um, and that their trust would deepen as they see you as the God who can sustain, who can heal them and uh, even provide in the midst of this situation. So we commit them to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, one of the first the kind of opening story of chapter six is around, you know, Mitch's story. And so mm -hmm. much of that was centered on waiting when you're in pain and your body is uh, there's something broken that people don't you know, maybe don't understand what the cause is or what the cure will be. And you're you're waiting in that. It's so hard to wait. Like when when we're in pain, I think that's just a just a headline for me, at least like when you're uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. Scott, you recently went through your own bout with, with some pain and some waiting. You want to yeah. talk about just some things that you learned through that or ways that you experienced God kind of speaking to you during that time? Yeah. So uh, going into late last year, uh, me and my wife had been having some conversations about how I don't rely enough on other people and I just mm -hmm. try to do everything myself. And she was like challenging me to like ask for help when I need help and those types of things. And I kind of like acknowledged it, but kind of brushed it off and just kept doing what I normally do. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. one day, Sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for all of us, you know, for all you men out there that are married, listen to your wife. Um, and uh, we had just purchased a new mattress. It was Black Friday. We got a good deal. I was super excited and I needed to move our mattress from upstairs to our downstairs bedroom. And it's one of those heavy ones that has like the gel layer in it. So it weighs like almost 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I like moved this mattress by myself down into the other room. And I remember like feeling something weird in my back. And then I'm like, I'm just going to lay down on the mattress now that I've moved it for a second. <laughs> and I did that. And then I like, couldn't get back out of the, out of the bed. Like my oh. bed was just like toast. Um, and so then I was, I, yeah, I was laid up for about three, three months, almost, uh, the first couple, like really stuck to bed. I remember trying to go to the doctor. Um, like I had to take like four breaks just to walk from my car to the ER or urgent care, uh, just cause I couldn't walk at all. Like I, I would walk like maybe 15, 20 feet and then have to like sit down <laughs> and get my back in some kind of different position so that it wasn't hurting. Um, but basically I had a, a herniated disc. I was pushing against one of my nerves that shot all the way down my leg. Um, and so I had like numbness in my foot and anytime I was in any position, but laying down with lumbar support like i was just in excruciating pain and so yeah i mean it, it was difficult because i um of course wanted it to go away right away did anyone ask did you ask anyone to help you move the mattress no i did a question from <laughs> tyler <our friend. laughs> apparently tyler no. saying he was at home that day next to his phone waiting for a text <laughs> to help his it friend was move the mattress it was yeah I, but after that, uh, there's a couple times I moved stuff that I texted a couple friends and said like, Hey, can you help me? So I did learn, good. I did learn. That's good. Um, good. But yeah, I, I like gained an appreciation for people who do deal with chronic pain for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, it was excruciating and I was only like that for a few months and mm -hmm. I just, 
I there's a there's a man on staff here who has chronic pain. Who he has um, some different issues with his. I think it's like rheumatic stuff, um, things with his immune system attacking his own body, and he's just in chronic pain. And I was reflected on him and thought about him, and that's what helped give me the perseverance to get through it. Um, because it's like, man, if if this guy can suffer for years, like I can keep moving forward. I can keep doing this. I can keep pressing yeah. forward. Um, and you know, I was forced into relying on other people. Like my wife took care of everything for a couple yeah. of months. Um, and it was hard on her. And I, I realized like, Oh dang, like I did this. Uh, and now she's having to pay for me not listening to her. Um, and so like, there was lots of lessons I learned through that time <laughs> uh, for yeah. sure. No, those are, those are great. Those are great lessons. I love for anybody in the chat that's maybe had a time of waiting for the physical pain yeah. to go away. The answer we'd love to hear, like, how are you? If, if you're in it right now, obviously you want to hear that. But also if you've been through one of those times, we'd love to hear from some of you, like, what are the things that you feel like God did share with you or show you or just even allow you to experience about himself or about community? that was different and you know looking back only going through that would have opened you up to those new lessons and those new realities so we'd love for you guys to drop drop those in um i did want to touch on the the idea pastor matt talks about there's a lot of different things that the waiting does to us um, yeah. or that happen through the waiting um, he talks about really our character being formed. Um, he talks about learning, which is some of what you just spoke to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, learning a lesson or learning a, a, a new idea, learning more about him. He talks about the waiting being a time where we get to know God and that it's not just mm -hmm. about the circumstances we're in, but it's about knowing him and that he's he's on an eternal timetable, whereas we're on a, a very finite timetable. Right. Uh, I love to talk a little about the learning idea. I kind of wanted to throw this question to both you, you know, Scott and Fredo. Um, as we're talking, you know, to each other, even as believers or as people out in the world, and, and we see someone in pain, it can often be a temptation to quickly kind of hone in on that idea of like, what is God trying to teach you right now? Right. Um, I think about Job in the Bible and his friends coming around him with a lot of different those, you know, those filters of like, well, what's going, what did you do or what's going on or, you know, what, what could be the cause of it all? And so I would just love for you guys just maybe share some perspective around that notion of God is allowing these things for us to learn, but not sort of getting to that shadow side where we're, we're thinking about God as he's this, you know, kind of scheming father who's doing bad things to us or allowing us to have pain to teach us a lesson, you know, mm -hmm. unpack mm -hmm. some perspective on that for us. I think it, one could help us engage better believer to believer, friend to friend, family member to family member, but it also helps us to engage with our father better if we understand sort of how he's leading us in these moments. So that's a big opener. But what, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Tim, because I do feel like there is a temptation, especially within Christian communities to kind of, as you said, always frame the season of waiting around what what is God trying to teach you? Or what do you feel like you've been learning about him? And sometimes that could put the pressure on the person who's in pain waiting. It's like, I don't know. I haven't heard from him, you know, or they, they maybe for a lot of reasons have just been not open to maybe wanting to hear, you know. And so I do think there is a distinction to be made between, you know, a time where you're having to wait and there is something to learn and just a time where you're having to wait because that's how life goes. Like if there's anything we know about the world, it's that God has built it within this understanding of time and he operates within it even though he's outside of it you mentioned that matt talked about god and his perspective being eternal one and one thing that i think about often that helps ground that idea that god is eternal is that he's never in a rush god is never in a rush mm -hmm. he created the world it, he took seven days why he's not in a rush when, when he told abraham that he was going to be a father of many nations it didn't come right away. The man waited a long time, right? God's never in a rush. Jesus was born as a baby, not as a full grown man. God is not in a rush, you know? And so I, yes. I have to regularly come back to this in my own life. When I think about God being eternal and outside of the timeline that I want him to operate in is that he's just not in a rush. He's not in a rush in my life, in your life, you know? And so sometimes the waiting is just the natural way things go. Like mm -hmm. there's no way 
to get to a place of maturity and love apart from waiting in life, you know? And so it's okay if you feel like you don't have a specific thing, you know, that you feel like God is trying to teach you. And maybe there's just a general understanding that God is growing you through this. You know, you talked about character. And I sometimes will think, man, what kind of person would Fredo be if I always just got what I wanted instantaneously? You know, mm -hmm. Matt in the chapter talked about uh, the Charlie, uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the character. I want it now, Daddy. I want it now. <laughs> and, and I think it's a fair question to ask. What kind of person would we be if we got everything that we wanted right when we wanted it, you know? Yeah. And, and there's got to be the door open enough for us to consider waiting is shaping us. Yeah. And in, in just a general way, because that's just how life goes. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. And I think just like um, I shared just a little bit ago, too, like God can use your waiting season to uh, speak to other people as well. It might not be that you're learning something in it, but that you are an example for someone else or you can be an encouragement for someone else. Um, you know, I reflected on uh, this guy's life that works with us and it kept me going and it helped bring faithfulness uh, to me. And, you know, I'm not um, thankful that he had to go through what he had to go through, but I am thankful that he was a part of my life and my story to be able to help me in that difficult season. Um, and so like some things are um, not just for you. Some things are for other people as well. Yeah, yeah that's good. Sure. That's good. Yeah. Le Leslie said uh, constant pain is so rough and test one. Um, big time. God used recent physical pain to redirect uh, her career path. I'm thankful now, but man, it was tough. So that's awesome. Wow. Thank you for that, Leslie. Wow. I had yep. another question. I think it's from Al. Is it Al, Al, Al Gar? Al, Al? Oh, that's, that's Al. That's our, that's our guy, Al, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's our Al, yeah. That's our Al, yeah, okay. Um, good question. How can one discern whether God is telling them to wait or saying no? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? <laughs> how do you know how do you discern whether god is telling them to wait or saying no this is not a good answer to the like like a, a like how do you do it but i think they're in that question it's almost like in the time of waiting um what am i trying to say that 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 to me i read that and i think about like okay i gotta know the decision like is this waiting or is this no mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what's the outcome and so Again, this isn't a helpful answer to the discerning part, but it is an acknowledging of like, it's just so hard to wait because even in that we're wanting to get it to where, like, when can I land it? Maybe mm -hmm. it's a no. And, if I, and I just want to know if it's a no, right? Or is it is it waiting? And that means I'm okay now to sort of, again, release a little bit of the control or expectations and see where it goes. I think in the nature of waiting itself, it's almost like you, you don't maybe land on a yes, is it waiting or is it a no? I don't know if I'm, that's making sense. What, what do you guys think? No, yeah, yeah I think it is. I, I feel like uh, given my natural bent to be a bit pessimistic at times that if I do feel like I'm being invited by God to enter a season of waiting, then I'd rather just respond with, okay, so it's a no, God. <laughs> that's what it is. So I would say I, I would struggle to discern the difference because my lack of sanctification would just lead me to be upset with the waiting and, and conclude it's a no. <laughs> <laughs> right, right and be and just be upset with god that it has to be a no you know and so i yeah that's a great question i'm not sure where i would where i would honestly take that um other than to imagine that if i knew everything god knows then i would be more resolved with his no you know yeah. than than i than i am up front or or would see the the opportunity for change in in the season of waiting you know yeah but, yeah i don't know i'm i'm not holy enough to be able to answer that question <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's that's part of why waiting is so hard is because part of waiting is not knowing. Like, I think those mm -hmm. are sometimes easier because you can move on or figure out what's next or whatever it is. But being in that waiting period is um, simply that. Like, you have to wait to see whether it's even going to be a yes or a no. It's not just waiting uh, for waiting's sake. Um, and so I think it becomes really difficult. I actually just had a conversation with someone I'm in small group with um it's a, a couple that really want to have um a kid and um they've been praying for a long time and they they really want it and i was just talking with them and they one of them said like yeah i kind of stopped praying for it like i just like mm -hmm. and i said well well did did god tell you no 
or you know and uh she because she basically asked that same question of like how do you know and i said unless like you feel like god really did tell you no like i would at least keep praying about it and I, we talked about mm-hmm. i think the same story we talked about last week in uh book club around the the judge and the parable of the woman with the judge and just making requests um over and over and over and over again and so i would say unless you've gotten a clear no i would keep praying for it and i think there are some of course guardrails to to like talk about and think through like is this yeah. something that's like sinful or bad or harmful or um you know does this something that i think would align with god's will or something that you know the bible says is good you know yeah um i i think there's like things we can do to judge whether we should keep moving forward or not but i would say where you don't hear um a direct answer you should rely on wisdom uh and that's why God gives us wisdom is so that we can still make choices and decisions as we go about our life, even when we're not hearing directly an answer from him. Yeah. Yeah. I think community probably has a role to play too. I would imagine um, thinking about that again, between distinguishing, is this a, is this a waiting season or is this a flat? No, there could be outside wisdom, you know, Scott, to your point on some, some kind of wisdom coming that that might be gifted to you by somebody else, you know, like someone just has a better perspective on you or how you're responding in this and and they might they might help kind of distinguish between those moments you know so i love too what uh, danny had just mentioned too about it's hard to see the fruit of waiting man that's so Mm -hmm. true uh but then yeah i'm looking back it it becomes really clear the the growth that came out of that you know the the way that Mm -hmm. it shaped you and and how how you've become a different kind of person who can who can like wait you know so and i know matt had Pastor Matt talked about that. I think towards the end of the book where he talked about while you're waiting, God is working. And just uh, the reality that oftentimes, you know, what we're waiting for is is um, is maybe even overshadowed by the reality that God is doing something to us in the waiting. You know, like yeah. what he's doing to us is sometimes more important than what we're waiting for, you know, in the waiting. And so there's something to be said there. That just doesn't sound good, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think th- that's. Oh, You'll ahead, get Dan. less people at your church. No, no, you're, you're, good, you're good, Scott. Finish, finish your thought. Uh, you know, I was going through uh, a waiting season, and there was a mentor in my life that I, I talked with about it, and he basically just challenged me to reflect on uh, my past disappointments, my past seasons of waiting, um, and asked if I was still going through those things. And I was like, no, like that was 10 years ago. That was five years ago. Um, and he said, well, like, that's something to reflect on then. Like God brought you through those times. Like yeah, there yeah. wasn't an, an end to those mm-hmm. seasons, to that waiting, to those difficulties. Um, and so like we can, even in our own times of waiting, reflect on our past waiting of God is faithful to bring us through things. Um, I think it's difficult with, you know, like chronic pain and different things like that. But we even know with that at some point, God will bring us through that and in, 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 into eternity. And I think, part of what helps us is having that eternal mindset when we're, we're thinking about things of this life is short um, and it's difficult and it's filled with sin and pain and all these things. But at some point, you know, Jesus is going to make all that stuff right. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we can keep looking forward to that as our hope, um, even in the midst of the pain and the waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's That's good. I like what I think it was Philip Philip Shield Shield P one had talked about ask more questions. I, yeah. I love that man. I, I think that's such a great practical discipline in a season of waiting. I recently listened to a um, uh, a speaker talk about how he forced himself to stare at a painting for three hours. So he went to a museum, and it was kind of for like this kind of thought experiment around patience and just how impatient we are as people. And so he forced himself to sit there for three hours and observe the same painting. And he's not like by nature a fan of, you know, going to museums and just staring at artwork for a few hours. But he had talked about the longer he sat there and stared, the more details he began to notice about this piece of art. And and the the brighter the story kind of came into view for him as he paid attention Mm -hmm. to the way that the characters were drawn, the setting they're in, you know. And so I think there is something to what I think it's Philip is talking about. Ask more questions. You know, the longer you're in that place, maybe the more things come into view, you know, and you begin to in asking the questions, get a, get a better understanding of God. You, you come to discover yourself in those seasons, you know? And so I think there's, yeah, there's so much to be said in terms of what's practically uh, yeah. available to us as we wait, you know, and, and questions I think is definitely one of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, Zach, Zach's comment about there's so much mystery in the waiting. Um, and, it, and even what you're just saying, Fredo, it makes me think about like sometimes the present and the, the, the waiting that we're doing right now, there's almost like a vantage point issue. Like we're almost so close to it that you can't actually make out all of what it's doing and what it will be. And really only as you move on beyond it or through it, do you get the right vantage point to see it for what it was and what it changed in us and what it yielded. And um, I think that's, a, it's. A, I'm just thinking about that objects and mirror up here closer than they are like message on your, mm -hmm. you know, cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sometimes I think in the waiting, we're just so close in the present. We're too close. Yeah. to see all of what it's doing and it's only in that perspective of that vantage point of going through or or looking back even a week or two weeks or three or, or years and saying oh wow that's you know that that's what it really yielded in me and and, and exactly me, you exactly know? so yeah i love too from the chat christine vo i think yeah. you mentioned this i'm really good at pointing out um how God worked in the past, but I feel like it's like 50 first dates. What a great movie <laughs> reference. What a great reference. Uh, when I so quickly forget in the right now and wonder what's happening. <laughs> That's awesome. Christine, as soon as I read that, I, I thought of a ton of Psalms where, you know, Israel is actually, they're in bondage and, and they're recounting the works of God of old. And the Psalmist is saying, don't forget Israel. Don't forget what God has done. Don't forget that he has kept his promises. And so, this current season of, of both waiting and oppression that they're under won't last forever. You know, Yahweh will hear us and he will deliver us, you know? And so you're right. There is, I think uh, a special gift we all have to forget, you know, mm -hmm. some, some writers call it spiritual amnesia. Like we just, we're so prone to forget the way that God will be faithful to the way that he will pull us through, you know? And yeah, we'll find ourselves like 50 first dates, just uh, <laughs> feeling like we're relearning the same person again. We had yeah, I think, yesterday. I think it's so hard to not focus on your pain when you're in pain. And yeah. so like, it, like, you know, something happens, you're in pain. And now immediately I'm thinking about my circumstance right now, which is why we forget all those other things. Yeah. And that's why it's so, it's so important for us to have community and have like believers around us that can speak into our life, our pain, our situations and remind us of who God is and what God's doing. Uh, because without that, I think we do kind of get lost in our here and now on a regular yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Good, Absolutely. Good question about there's a, the thought around, you know, in these times of waiting, do we ask questions of ourselves or are we asking questions of God? Um, mm. That's I think that's an interesting one. Like, is it yes. just send us in? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send us into times of reflection inwardly and also then in, in God's direction. What do, you, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I definitely think it's it's a moment for self-revelation for sure. I, mm -hmm. Like if I had to kind of categorize areas where I feel like I'm I'm invited to grow most recently in my life, it would be in this realizing that I am in, a deeply impatient person. Um, I prefer to be in a rush. It, it kind of communicates to me that I have a sense of control, even though on the outside I, I don't move quickly. Right. But internally, like I'm, I'm spending a ton because I just need to move on to the next thing. And so I think, yeah, we ask questions of ourselves and. I think for me, there's there's been um, a weird way that I have gotten home and feel like I'm in control if I can move things at the pace that I want them to go. And so that's why I exist in a rush and I prefer God to to get on board with me, you know. And so, yeah, and I think you'd also definitely ask questions of God, like what he what he, why is he OK with things going so slow, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're they they touch each other. Um and the way I look at it, because like, I'll ask God, like, what are you trying to teach me in this difficulty or in this waiting season? But then I also have to like be a little introspective and ask myself, like, what am I feeling? What am I processing? What am I thinking about myself in the midst of this? Cause often it's, I feel like I deserve for the right thing to happen to me. I feel like, um, I deserve to be healed or I deserve, um, mm -hmm. to, you know, get a promotion or a raise or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Um, and I have to like realize that, part of why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling is because I'm also prideful and I'm uh, thinking of myself maybe more highly than I ought to be. Um, and so I think part of it, like, I would say, yeah, it's, it's a both. And uh, you got to ask God questions, but then to be willing to do the work to try to understand the answers to those questions too. Mm -hmm. uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, God's not just going to 
for the most part, speak to you audibly and say, you really need to work on this. Um, <laughs> most of the yeah. time you ask him questions and then you have to do the work to, to seek out people and scripture and all different kinds of things to try to understand what he's saying to you. For yeah. Sure. I love that. Yeah. Je Jeannie points out the journaling is so helpful in, th in times like this because you can go back and reread what has happened yes. in our life and see all that the Holy Spirit has done for us in the past. Um, that's great. In, in uh, Pastor Matt's retelling of Mitch's story, you guys remember that point where like uh, Mitch's prayer changed and then mm -hmm. that was where he, he was healed. I'd love to maybe throw out some, and I don't want to like make it too some uh, like too tactical, but like practical ways that we can pray. Like how can we pray in the waiting? Like how would you guys think about, you know, recommending or even leading someone to pray um, in a time of waiting, because I think that willing prayer is a great one to start with. Like, are you, if you're willing, I, mm -hmm. I would love to be healed. But, I, you know, so just sort of acknowledging God's will and his control. But, yeah, what do you guys think about just some some starting points for folks if they're in a point right now that they are waiting, not sure what's next? How could they talk to God and engage with him in, in that time? Yeah, I would even challenge people to start before the waiting of. um praying because often we wait till the waiting experience to make these prayers. And then it's like, well, that's why, you know, we have to go through these things is because it's the only time we're thinking about it. Um, but you know, even in the good times, like God, what are you wanting me to learn in this? How are you wanting me to grow in this and to become more like Jesus in this situation? I think that's uh, less often prayed when we're going through good times and easy times and times where we're blessed. And I would say if, if you're going through one of those times, like start praying those prayers now, because there's things for us to grow and learn and engage in, uh, in all seasons of life. There's a time for all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Fredo, what, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I think, uh, often of the language that the Psalms provide for us. And so even if you've been waiting and you feel like you want God to respond, don't hesitate to say, as the psalmist say, Lord, come quickly. Do not delay to help me. Do not delay. I mean, there's plenty of Psalms that literally end. The last line of the prayer is, Lord, do not delay to help yeah. me. Yeah. I praise you because you're faithful and you hear me, but do not delay. And so if you're looking for language around prayer, it can be that, you know. Um, it can be uh, a, a prayer of presence. God, would you be with me in this moment of waiting? Would, would you be with me, you know? If you're feeling as though God is absent, talk to God about how he's been absent. Like, God, where where have you been? I, I don't have the answer. You know, there's plenty of times where David says he's unsure as, as to what to do. You know, he doesn't understand what's happening. And so I think it's it's um, more than OK. I would even say scripture permits us and encourages us because those kinds of prayers are recorded for us. And I think they they empower us um, and give us license to speak to God with a kind of honesty and directness, you know, as we as we try to put words to our prayers in terms of how we're feeling and what we're thinking through. Um, I love your insight about, wait, you know, praying before this, this season comes to, you know, um, and I think also in, in those prayers, like recounting God, I know that you have acted in the past and and maybe having some prayers of gratitude. God, thank you for the way that you've helped you know, us in this moment, you know, I think of Jeannie and her husband, Matt, what they're going through, just a prayer of gratitude. God, you've held us up to this point. Thank you. Thank you for sustaining us. You know, even though Matt's arm is not fixed yet, we thank you for sustaining us. You know, he's here, yeah. he's alive, but would you show yourself faithful and, and bring him all the way to the end? You know, and so I think there's, you know, life is too complex to be either or. And so I think there's an appropriate nature to saying multiple things are true in our prayers, you know? Yeah. So, God, I've been patient. But I feel like you're delaying, you know, like I know you're faithful, but would you please come, you know, um, would you allow this time to expose areas that I need to grow in? You know, I think just having full reign of, of yeah. how you might be feeling and what you might be thinking is yeah. really important in our prayer life. So, yeah, I would say definitely keep praying for the miracle you're looking for. Keep asking, keep asking, keep yeah. asking and be willing to express how you're feeling in all those areas. And I would say like something that I would pray like in addition to those things is God, if the answer is no or wait, give me the strength and the perseverance to still live a life glorifying to you in that time. Mm. Um, yeah. Because, you know, mm. sometimes we feel like if the answer is no, then it's like, fine, well then I'm just going to go do my own thing. Uh, but really it's like, how do we, even in the midst of difficulty, live a life that is bringing him glory 
Um, and so like asking for his, his strength, asking for a filling of the Holy spirit to guide you so that you don't give into the flesh. Um, because it's really hard when you're in pain and you like want to give into that weakness. Cause it's like, man, mm-hmm. it hurts. It just hurts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's, I, I look at once again, people like the gentleman on staff and I just am so in awe of how strong he is. Yeah. Um, yeah to live the life he's living amidst the pain that he's going through. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, lots of really great stuff in the chat. Thank you guys for sharing and just being yeah. like, reflective and, and, and real. Um, yeah. Thanks for that. Pastor Fredo, a difficult time praying. Uh, I don't know how to say this one, the, the, uh, uh crumby, whoever crumby is, um, you know, that whole notion of like, I, am I, am I coming to God as entitled? Am I expecting because he has blessed me? that I should continue to get the blood, the blessings. I think that's a super real and appreciate you sharing that. Um, Zach, you commented on the, the presence of God being the thing that you're asking him and Fredo, you echoed that as well. Um, but asking and praying for God's presence. Um, mm-hmm. I've often mm-hmm. been, as I've been praying for people who are in times like this, where I don't know what they, you know, obviously if there's a medical thing, maybe there's a desired outcome, but maybe there's not a clear, I don't know what to ask for. I'll just ask that God would um, help them be more aware of the presence that he already has with them in the situation. Like sometimes it's not a question of, is he present in actuality, but rather am I aware of his presence and help me become aware of it, you know, is a great place to start in prayer yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, we we'll love to kind of kind of draw our, our chat to a close, but before we do, um, Fredo, if there's folks that are just needing like to, to be prayed over, they, they're in a time of really difficult waiting. Um, how can they get connected with the, with with the team with us better to be able to dialogue with them more? Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to both connect with you and pray for you. You can do that uh, by emailing us at online at sandalschurch.com online at sandalschurch.com. Our team will be able to uh, follow up with you. It, it's, such, it's such a beautiful thing that we've kind of discovered over the last several weeks and months is just, uh, once again, the gift of prayer, even digitally, you know. And so um, we know a lot of people are watching and a lot of you are in various places of life and seasons. And so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and just to know you are not a burden. You are not a burden to us. Your, yeah. your, your season of waiting is not a burden. Your life is not a burden to us. You know, it's a gift to be able to hear what you're walking through and to pray alongside you. You know, I think one of the lies that we, we might tend to believe is that um, I'm a burden to people. If I share yeah. what I'm struggling with, if yeah. I share the season I'm in, I, I'm going to sound like I'm just complaining. You know, I'm just venting. I don't trust God enough. You know, I'm just going to just take from people. You know, you are not a burden. You're not at all a burden. And so yeah. don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, that's great. I also I add in even that that thinking line that could say like, well, they probably hear this a lot. Mm-hmm. They probably hear this a lot, you know. Yeah. So I'm not gonna add 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 one more and and just know that's never it's just never the case. Like we we are here literally to serve you, our mm-hmm. our people, and and God has allowed us a great gift to be able to do this work for our our lives. And and you're who we want to serve and hear from. And it's never. Um, uh, another, you know, broken record moment. It's not like a too much. It's not like a, they get it all the time. Like, I just would love to speak against those barriers for for y'all to reach out if you're in a time when you you need to and you know you need to. So, yeah, um, yeah. Scott, thanks for being uh, a part yeah. of the conversation today. I, I, I love you, man. I'm Shooter. Grateful. Yeah, the ways that you you think and actually, you're you're teaching at our, of our campuses in an evening service. Is that yeah happening? yeah? When is on, that? Uh, is that okay? On on May fifth, I'll be at the Menifee campus for the the Sunday night service. That's so rad, dude. I love That's it. So great. That's so great. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for for joining everybody in the chat. Thanks for being here and making it a priority <laughs> every week. It's great. Fredo made it. Fredo made it through a whole stream without an issue. <laughs> yeah. We, we were waiting to see if it would happen, and it did, and praise God. That's amazing. So, um, Scott, would you mind just closing us off in prayer, and then we'll we'll say yeah. a final goodbye and, and get on with it. So I would love to. Yeah. God, thank you so much for today, a chance to come together, talk about you, talk about this awesome book that Pastor Matt wrote. Uh, I pray that you would help us in our times of waiting, that you would uh, fill us with your spirit, that you would give us the strength and perseverance to 
wait well and to live lives that are glorifying to you. Um, and ultimately, God, we also ask that you would provide the miracles we're waiting for. We yes, we need you um, to step in and touch our bodies, step our mind, touch our minds, touch um, every part of our lives because we're broken, sinful people, mm. and we need your perfection in our lives. And so we ask for your spirit to bring that to us. And uh, I pray for this week, everyone that's here and a part of this uh, book club, I pray that you would have a hand of blessing on them and that they would feel your favor this week. And all of this we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll see everybody next time. Shoots and ladders. Thanks again for being with us today. Pastor Climbing Fredo. to the top. Climbing <laughs> to the top. So join us back next time. <laughs> Chapter 7 next time. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.